Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Roll Series Week 5. We are into the Losers... something. I guess the Losers Quarterfinals. Yeah, that'll work. So the Losers Quarterfinals. Madcraft and Backlash, the game has already started a little bit, so we will be jumping in kind of in the middle, but I think the game... they might not have even finished plopping yet. Oh, they have finished plopping. Okay. Once again, we're on Mercurial. Madcraft going for Cloaky. And... And Tank is Bakuatsu's choice for the day. Bakuatsu is... Again, going for tanks. Okay, they just they just want tanks on Mercurial. See if it can work. So yeah, Madcraft's got to fight that off with Cloaky Bots. And I don't know if they're going to think to go for the Aegis, because, man, that worked really well last time. I think like, Aegis supported Knights? That would be scary. That'd be real scary, actually. He just supported knights. He just supported Ro uh, Ronin. I don't know. I mean, that, that might be the answer to tanks. Just build an build an e, just turn into an Aspis. Actually, it's Aspis supporting because that's the mobile version. But yeah, get an Aspis from an Aegis, and then you're good to go. So, right now, Madcraft is looking pretty strong, and Black Arts has kind of seeded some territory, though I think they're going to do the same thing as they did last time. Yeah, it looks like. They're cutting through the center, trying to set up a fire base over by the center lake, not really worrying too much about getting all this expansion in the back early. And Madcraft is also kind of... Well, they're not, certainly not trying to expand over to the south side five quickly but i don't i don't know what they're planning on doing like they're trying to figure out something but i don't think they quite know how to deal with it i mean three glaives three glaives versus kodachi is a little bit of an advantage for kodachi i think if micro perfectly the three glaives will win it's just tricky but you are dealing with units like as they take damage they die and as they die the group has less firepower so that does make things tricky. As for now, though, no, it's just sneaky, sneaky constables. Or sorry, sneaky conjurers, not constables, it's jump bots, which would be handy in this map, but sneaky conjurers. Unfortunately for them, not doing a whole lot of good. In fact, Madcraft has utterly seeded the entire map to Bakuhatsu at this point. Glaives trying what they can, but even with a slower Kodachi, the Glaives simply can't really catch up. Which is funny, because Glaives are actually faster than Kodachis. They're just not that much faster relative to the range. Oof. Bakuatsu's looking like they just want to completely rip apart Madcraft's base right now. Uh, for those... Okay, someone asking chat. Are these ever on Sundays? No. No, they're always on Saturdays. I'm sorry. It's Saturday just sort of has sort of become the 0k tournament day. So it's I mean it probably could be Sundays, it just hasn't been organized to be a Sunday. Anyway, back to the match. Four Glaives against three Kodachi. Kodachi's win. So Glaives gotta run away, and Madcraft knows it. Oh right, Madcraft! What am I thinking? They're of course they're going for heavy cloaky. They're Madcraft. Going hard on Cloaky is Madcraft's thing. It's like Ted McFred and Tanks, who incidentally got knocked out by Bakahatsu. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. So I'll probably see a third plate and then a proxy shield factory, because that's how Madcraft seems to like, or liked playing two weeks ago. They might have practiced and changed up their style a bit, but so far it's looking very familiar. Of course, that's not to say they're pure glaive, but the Ronin's there, and I'm I'm surprised they aren't using Imp. Like, I'm really surprised they don't have Imps alongside the glaives. Just for whether Kodachi come in and take them out. I mean, granted, at this point, it's it might be too late. I'm really not sure, other than maybe knights, what would be done that would work. The Ronin, unfortunately, have a bit of a speed and fire, or, well, rocket speed problem when it comes to actually hitting the Kodachis. Like, as you can see right there, it just doesn't... Also, come to think of it, the terrain isn't helping either. 
Like it's... Oops. Ah! But yeah, like the terrain is not helping. The Ronin are... Really kind of... They're fighting an uphill battle despite literally going downhill. The Kodachi's... The numbers are too high and the speed is too high. Again, an imp would make a lot of sense. Good force multiplier. Kind of push in with that. And we're seeing knights coming in down the pipe. That will help. Knights are a good idea in this case. Especially with the stardust up here. Oh, the sky dust could, uh, could cause problems. That could cause a lot of problems. Oh, okay. Uh, Hiramitsu and Chad is Crow, by the way. They're the tournament organizer. So yeah, someone else would have to run a tournament if it was going to be a Sunday tournament. Which, I mean, you know, right now we have this weekly, but in general, you know, if you want to run tournaments, it's always welcome. It's always cool to have more tournaments, but right now... Right now we have this tournament, and that's exactly what's happened, is this tournament, as Bakuatsu is looking... Very strong to advance, because right now, Madcraft simply has lost all of their economy. Bakuatsu has gotten doubled over. They got what they wanted last game. Like, when they were fighting against Steel Blue, and they couldn't quite... Sorry, not Steel Blue. Yeah, it was Steel Blue. Yeah. They're fighting against Steel Blue in the, in the Losers' quarterfinals. This is what they wanted to do. Set up a fire base, cut through the center, and then take the rest of the map behind all these defenses. Steel Blue put a stop to that. But Madcraft didn't quite catch on to what was happening in time and actually push in dealing with it, unfortunately. So that is going to be Madcraft basically stuck behind all this pressure, losing their commander, losing a huge chunk of their economy, trying desperately to build up some... I don't know if they're quite sure what to build up, honestly. I feel like Madcraft isn't really sure what unit to use to deal with this. I mean, the slings aren't going to hit things in time. Knights are a decent idea. Again, people are sleeping on imps. I swear with Kodachi's, people are sleeping on imps. I'm not in harm sure imps can get in Kodachi's if they're spotted, but certainly if they were put in place beforehand, yeah. Plenty of time for the glaives to come in, follow up, and rip apart the rip apart the Kodachis. And it's like imps are 120. Kodachi and a glaive, sorry, imp and a glaive costs as much as a Kodachi. It's totally worth it. I mean, it is a bit of a micro sink, but you're playing cloak bots. It's a, that's sort of the thing about cloak bots. That's a little bit frustrating, I imagine, for newer players coming in, is that cloak bots are actually a pretty micro-intensive factory. They're a cool factory, and they've got a lot of things going for them that are very, I guess, normal? In the sense that they kind of have the canonical raider, the canonical riot unit. Fairly canonic. Well, I guess the skirmishers, the rogue is similar. But like, they have their basic raider rider skirmish triangle is very straightforward. But everything else about them is kind of higher micro, and they have a tough time into the late game without being tricky. Also, yeah, worth noting, conjurers have area cloak, so area cloaking a area cloaking imp to get it into a Kodachi is very viable as a way of protecting an expansion. Like literally running around for Kodachi. But now we're seeing knights, though, and they are still doing a very good job. That's why I said knights would work, except for the if they're missing, I guess they didn't have sight. Oh, no, they, they do. Camera, do knights have a mischance? Oh, yeah, they do. That is one thing knights don't have going for them. Oh, oh, that's what's going on. I didn't realize Quicksilver. Ha Apparently, Quicksilver had a some kind of modification or possibly a texture map or something that changed unit speed. But I know there is a 
Like, the spring engine does have, like, speed as a thing. You can make, say, roads faster for certain units than ground or whatever. Zero K does not support that. It's one of the few engine features Zero K does not support, because in just about every other way, Zero K is essentially a showcase of all the different things the spring engine can do. But no, in this one case, the speed mod does not work in Zero K. But apparently Quicksilver had a speed mod for it. Mercurial does not. I mean, Quicksilver also just had a lot of, like issues with graphics and being very slow. Trees were inefficient and it was prettier, I'll grant, but it was way less functional. Yeah, that is going to be, looks like it's going to be, it's Vakuhas who has so much of the map available to them. Madcraft is simply unable to keep up. They, again, they got the knights, but I still think it was, they should have done that way earlier. It's just really not enough to contest to this. Because, like, we got 5,000... We got a Strider's cost worth of tanks here. Against... A couple of knights and a sling. And a glaive occasionally. Oh, well. Good thing in Madcraft, put a caretaker right next to where the commander corpse was. At the very least, you can take that. So I do admire the quick thinking there, but it's not going to be enough... Yeah, at the moment, it's kind of... It's kind of done. Last stand right now. Bakuhatsu pushing. Trying to do what they can. Repairing their knights at the very least. They got something. As well as area cloak. They got something. Oh, but... Fortunately, gotta be careful with that. Still, though, the ogres... Ogres and minotaurs just too much. I still think a couple imps would just take care of this. Or no, three imps actually. I take it three, or, um, maybe four. Like, that's four. That's two knights worth of imps would probably wipe out this entire army, especially with the area cloak, which has set up the entire army to be torn apart by everything else. It wouldn't be enough on its own, but it would at least open things up, give Madcraft a bit of breathing space. However, right now, it's... Yeah, it's not happening. Nope. Well, okay, 70 metal per second in a 1v1, but bear in mind... There's a fair amount of overdrive going on here. And a lot of metal extractors taken. And every one of them has overdrive. Or just about every one of them has overdrive. Like, overdriven at least 50%. So yeah, 70%. Bakuatsu has an amazingly strong economy right now. Well, with that... Oof. Yeah, Bakuatsu... They've got this. Unfortunately, Madcraft, it is not going to be enough. I would recommend... Seeing what imps can do. Not fault to you for going for cloaky bots. It's just that... There's a lot of tools that the Globot Factory has, and I, I don't know, I just, I keep insisting on imps because there's a lot they can do, but they're just kind of tricky to use. But if you can use them properly, and if you're a Globot Specialist, that's probably a thing you need to learn, then, yeah, it's a really handy tool, especially against vehicles, especially against, like, fast units. Especially, especially since you can use the area cloak of the, of the Conjurers to throw imps at your opponent without issue. All right. Well, with that we are going to be moving on to the to the winner semifinal or the loser semifinals. Me Bakavatsu against Stuart ninety eight. See where that is at. And do the whole thing with the maps and such. Yeah, okay. All right, so... 
Stuart and I need back to or losers semifinals. Actually, should write that down. Sorry, I didn't do that with the lose winners semifinal or winners finals. Not actually losers or winners semifinals before. All right. Oh, apparently Blow and Sewer 98 was actually a pretty good game. Yeah, unfortunately, it was already quite a ways in, so I thought I'd just watch the one that just started. Oh, well. Maybe I made some bad choices. It happens. Okay, so we have Frosty Cove out. We have Intersection out. We have Baron out. And Mecha and Sonya, because that map is... No one likes that map. So that Mercurial, Iski, and Fallendale. Probably going to be Fallendale, honestly. Maybe Mercurial. Ba Bakuatsu might try to push into Mercurial. But I'm guessing Iski's going to be the next ban. Would have been interesting, though, if we saw Iski Channel. Or would be interesting. It's not banned yet, so it might be an option. Ah, Mercurial. Really? Bakuatsu bans Mercurial. And that means we are going to be on Fallendale. Because Iski's Stewart's last pick, so we are on Fallendale. I must say, I do like the way that this map selection process works, just because it does mean we are seeing different maps. Like, Fallendale is obviously the one that people kind of hate the least, but... We're still seeing Mercurial, we're still seeing some Baron, some Frosty. Not so much Intersection or Mecha and Sonia, and Iski is a C map, and those are kind of controversial. But yeah, so it's kind of cool that we do have that. Because, it, no, to me it's important to have, to have a system that allows you to have reasonably even spread of maps. So yeah, it's a good change. Now the question is, what are we seeing? We're seeing Bakuatsu go for Anthbots. Stuart. I expect they're going to go for Rovers. And indeed they are! There are Rovers! I did not see that factor before I said that. So, good job me. Alright, let us get going. Remember once Bakuatsu's got the pregame all set up. Which is quite a lot. All right. Well, Bakuatsu is already ready. And another Anthbot versus Rover matchup. Should be very interesting. We saw an earlier one, but it kind of fell apart because it was just Mass Duck and nothing really countering it. This time I expect to see a little bit more variety. Like, I expect it to be a little more even. Because, yeah, the... What is it? I believe it was Steel Bloom Stewart. Well, we'll see. I mean, Stewart at least has had some experience with this. Knows how, knows what to expect. So again, going for the raids with one dart, two scorchers, or again in the Mason Goat. I don't. I don't know, Bakuatsu. They probably realize that Mass Ducks is an option. I just don't know if they're going to be going for it. Conch is already ready, but a duck is in play! Hey! Bakuatsu learned from Steel Lose Game, or if they were watching Steel Lose Game. Which they might have been? I don't know. But they, they know what to do here. They've got that duck. They're protecting. Making sure they don't lose anything to the Scorcher too easily. Yeah, the Lotus as well. Very well played. Bakuatsu keeping their Kosh safe. That is a wise move. I like it. So Bakuatsu actually in a stronger position than Steel Blue was last time. <laughs> Although Bakuatsu isn't the only one. Stuart 98 also learning from before. 
Nice little guard there, making sure that their Scorchers are at least near enough by. And also not going too hard on the, on the harass. This is going to be a bit more of an even game, less harassment. Stewart's, Stewart's pivoting over to extra economy a little bit faster. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see when Stewart decides to... Or if Stewart decides to go mass economy. It feels like they're not going that strong in their economy. Oh, priorities probably. No, priorities are the same. Weird. I guess Paco just, just has more to work with, so it's easier for them to build up. Either that or they have prioritized their commanders. Or, this priority is something that you don't really see very easily. Oh yeah, Paco has his commander's high priority. Their conch isn't high priority, but the commander certainly is. Always a useful tool. And Stuart has learned. Ripper, right off the bat. Disappointed though they might be, it's their their assessment that Scorcher may not be useful after the first couple minutes in this matchup is probably a good one. Or at the very least, one that's worth following up on, seeing if you know maybe going for non-Scorcher options is the way to go. Because if that works, then they could have a chance to continue on to the Losers Finals and fight Steel Blue once again. But Steel Blue is... They are waiting. Whoever wins this fights Steel Blue in order to fight Golda. That's how this tournament will go. But yeah, unfortunately, it's just... <laughs> that expansion pace is entirely a question of priority. Bakuatsu's commander is a higher priority than their factory. And that has just meant that they're doing a lot more. They're able to get a lot more metal. It'll get more, a bit more energy. I mean, Bakuatsu is accessing quite a bit. They only have 25 energy and they don't even have... They only have 17 going in their factory. On the other hand, there's 20 coming in here for Stewart. They aren't actually losing all that much. Like, I don't know why... I guess wind generator kind of makes sense from an emergency power perspective. But yeah, Stewart's... Stewart's doing okay. They only look far behind because of the numbers in the top, but yeah, production-wise... Production-wise, Stewart is actually doing quite well. It's just a matter of getting the right unit types. And also a question of whether Stewart can break apart Bakuatsu's metal, because, I mean, yeah, Stewart's not too far behind yet, but sooner or later is going to make some caretakers and make enough power plants, and then they're, all this metal, all that metal will be useful. That hasn't happened yet, but it's bound to eventually. As it is, Bakuatsu is still getting a lot out of the fact that they have all the spare metal and energy to work with. Their expansion is going as quickly as it possibly could. Stuart, on the other hand, kind of waiting on a lot here. Like, Got a lot of power plants being built up. Their metal is not being taken as quickly as it could be. So territory control is much slower. Stuart, however, does have the... Does have the ride cannon. They do have the ripper. They can actually take care of some of the ducks. There is a chance. It is not Scorcher. I don't know why they're insisting on using Scorcher. I guess, okay, I do know why, because it's a really good raider unit. Let's go around the map, try to kill metal extractors. Not a bad option in principle. Not the best option in practice. And also, this mason just decided to kill itself. It was done with this world. How sad. Maybe don't kill yourself, mason. Anyway... There is a good raid coming in here, at the very least. Bakuatsu losing some of their metal up north. And actually, maybe opening things up a bit. They cut off the commander a touch, but Bakuatsu's commander isn't under any real threat. There aren't enough units to take it on yet, though we do have Ripper Ravager coming up. Stuart has learned from the last game. Absolutely has learned from the last game. This is, this is dangerous. Actually, very dangerous for Bakuatsu now. Stuart knows exactly what to do. Bakuatsu... Getting a plate, but doesn't really have a whole lot in the way of production capacity. So, Bakuatsu ac accessing a bunch. Stuart is using most, if not all, the. Oh, yeah, they got the plate up now. They got all the metal being used. Or very nearly, once the plate actually starts constructing stuff. Another caretaker wouldn't be a bad idea, but 
overall, Stuart is... Stuart is doing a lot stronger than their territory position would suggest. Like, Bakuatsu now just building third plate. They need four plates in order to use even a... Even, like, 90% of their metal. Even to start chipping away at the metal excess. Stuart, on the other hand, they have caretakers. They have two plates. They have stuff building around the map. Bakuatsu's commander is also in a really dangerous position. Completely unupgraded, relying entirely on lotuses, which are not a useful tool for getting rid of Ripper Ravager. Bakuatsu's commander might be going down right now. Yeah, Ravager coming in here. The Ripper helping out as well. The Stinger doing what it can. And fortunately for Bakuatsu, that Stinger was a very safe point of retreat to. Ducks and Arcs is able to come back here and start pushing back. Stuart 98 forced to retreat, but they still have... Oh, Ripper Ravager Fencer now. Yeah, they've got they've got a reasonably strong army coming in here. The attrition's about even. Territory control is in Mac Bakuatsu's favor, but the overall economy is also about even, and Bakuatsu relying entirely on light units. And no caretakers. Yeah, unfortunately, Bakuatsu is accessing a lot of metal, and that is putting them far behind. Stuart, on the other hand, is making great use of the metal they have. And they're looking ready to take out the Stinger. Yeah, this is it. Ravager coming in here, scouting things out, seeing what's up. Ah. Backwise is not going to go for it yet. Maybe get Badgers. Ah, no! Impaler! Even better option. Get the Impaler, set that up. A little harder to defend, but way easier to deal damage with. You don't have to worry about the Claws actually doing what they need to do. Just set up and start firing rockets at things. I mean, considering that now Stuart has full knowledge of what is here thanks to that Ravager, it's a really good call. Unfortunately, it's only a good call if it actually is targeting a thing. Also a little bit tricky here, Bakuatsu. I'm not sure I entirely agree with their army position. It's a little bit clumped. For the Rippers, it's fine, but for the Fencers, they need to be spread out a bit. Ah, no! No, the Fencers, what are you doing? No! What are you doing? Are you even fight moving? Ah, oh. Stuart snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. This is what fight move is for. So Fencers actually shoot things. Like, that's, this is why Fencers are good. Like, look at the damage they're dealing. That's what you needed to have, but they weren't fight moved. Got completely destroyed. I mean, luckily, Stuart 98 just has a stronger economy and production going on, or at least did. It's kind of evened out now. But yeah, just lucky for them, they had a backup force. But that's not great. In fact, that's really bad. Bakuatsu's got a strong position to build out from here. Firebase that's going to be almost impossible to penetrate just with factory units. They're probably going to need a missile silo or something. At least cost effectively. And losing an entire army just because you clicked somewhere instead of using fight move and or line move. Uh, Bakuatsu's got this now. There, there's This is, this is Bakuatsu's game to lose. Stuart has a reasonable amount of map control, but having lost all these units, it's like that's the that's tough. I mean, also the speed disadvantage doesn't help either. You'd probably want to use scorches against the boys, but still, it's like clearly, I think it's pretty clear that Stuart is just they're tilted. They're tilted hard. Like they are, they're tilted. They're confused. They have no idea what to do. This is not an easy matchup, but it's more like, you know, ducks get torn apart by rippers. Ravagers are reasonably okay as support units. Scorchers might be useful as backup for dealing with boys. Might be. I'm not 100% sure because boys, their attack is kind of hard to dodge. And if you don't dodge it, you're slowed. And then you're kind of dead. Maybe Claw, honestly, against boys. Or not Claw, Badger against boys. So at least the fencers are able to be useful as support, but unfortunately, it's just... Bakuatsu is, like I said, they have rectified the production issues, or the majority of the production issues. 
So Stuart 98 no longer has that advantage, and most of that advantage was thrown away when they decided to walk their forces without fight moving, leaving half of their fence leaving their fencers completely defenseless. Yeah, that is that is that. Like, I do think that Stuart's command or sorry, I don't know where Stuart's commander went. I do think that Stuart had a chance here, but it's just I it's just a matter of knowing what the matchup does, and this matchup is weird. And it's clear they're trying to figure it out during the course of this tournament. And they almost had it too. I think that they had a really good idea. The boys coming in here would have been dealt with which with scorchers, but that is that. Stuart throws in the towel. I'm really sorry about that, Stuart. It seems like a tricky matchup, but I think I think it's the right idea in the first place. Just it's probably one of those matches where you gotta just keep running the counters. Although I do think I do think Badgers would be of some use against boys. If nothing else is a distraction, the boys would start shooting towards that instead of anything else. And maybe go Badger Scorcher against a lot of boys. But it seems like it's very much a micro match where you want to get the right units in the right place at the right time, otherwise you're dead. Yeah, those are tricky. Oh, apparently Stuart mentioned they didn't even move the forces that all died. They just walked to their death. Okay, that's that is really unfortunate. I'm actually really surprised the fencers moved then. They should have just been staying in place and attacking. That is weird. Okay, well, I'm really sorry about that. Like, I, I don't know. That's... That is a strange thing to have happen. But we are done that match, unfortunate as it was. And we're moving on to the losers' finals. He's still blue in Bakamatsu. Have to work that out. Winner of this fights Golda. It's going to be pretty, pretty intense match. I mean. Winner fights Goda, loser gets, well, third place. I mean, it's again, it's all a matter of the standings. Right now, Bakuatsu actually has a lot to gain. In fact, they've already gained a lot. Even the third place is going to be pretty nice. Like, going up from 11th seed to probably, I think, 8th or 9th seed, maybe? Possibly even 7th. Like, Bakuatsu has a lot to gain from this week. And we are already getting into the bands. So, Frosty's already out. Yeah, back on too. Wow. So, Steel Blue's fourth place right now. If they win, if, if, they, if they lose this, they're going to still go up probably in seeding because unfortunately, Dregs and Randy aren't available. And otherwise, Stewart looking to hold, maybe go up a bit. Bakwatsu looking to go up a lot. Steel Blue probably going to go up a bit. And, yeah, that's, of course, it's weekly. This We're only halfway through. <laughs> so, looking like Mercurial is key or Intersection. We haven't seen Intersection yet. I'm curious if the players would want to play it. Mercurial has... Oh, okay. So, yeah. Is key or intersection? And, yes. We are on intersection. That is the map for today. Oh, whoops. I say all that and I wasn't even actually showing it. My bad. Intersection. That's the map. Went well, through all the effort to make this fancy thing. It's really just a bunch of X's. Like, literally the letter X. Just in a font that looks cool. 
But hey, it works. It's a, it, it, it's a cool looking font. So we'll be setting up the game intersection of map, which I mean, it's it's a weird map. I kind of expect to see shield or like shield versus rover or versus spider. Or, I don't know what I expect. I mean, it could be anything. This map is just weird. The ramps kind of work for vehicles and are really big, so they can't really close them out as much. Oh, too loud. Sorry. Can't really close them out as much, but it's just at the same time, it's kind of... I don't know what to make of it. I just don't know. See who the players go for. We have Shieldbot coming in here for Bakuhatsu. Steel Blue, on the other hand... I have no clue. Big gunships for all I know. It won't be gunships. No, no one's gonna build. No one's gonna plop gunships in a tournament. I mean, now that I said that, we might see someone, but I doubt it. Oh, go ahead. In case you're wondering about Twitch emotes, you don't put colons around. It's not like Discord. You literally just type in the name of the emote. It's like if it's if it sees that word in chat in any capacity, it'll replace it with the emote. It's really weird. Oh no, it's Shield Mirror. Alrighty then. Shield Mirror it is. Steel Blue starting out economic. Makabatsu starting out economic. Both players going for the early early convict, trying to set up an early expansion, which makes sense. I mean, early economy is always strong. Yeah, this match this match could take a while. Shield Mirror. It's going to be a lot of static defenses. It's going to be a lot of death balling. Not a whole lot of sneaking around. But maybe some. There could be some sneaking around. Could be some roaches too. We might see that come in there and just sneak under a shield and go boom. And then you lose everything. So with that, we have Bakumatsu. Nice defense coming in there. Steel Blue, on the other hand, primarily expanding into their own base with their worker. You send the commander up front. More Steel Blue's approach is a bit more typical. Bakuatsu's approach, it can work. It's just not the approach that's often done because the commander can defend itself. But now Bakuatsu does have the guarding bandit, so it's not a bad idea. Also, immediately going over to the northeast. On the other hand, Steel Blue, much more focused on getting their base set up. So Bakuatsu, as with Mercurial... Very keen on getting, a, like, on throwing their weight around the map early in order to secure kind of some soft pressure and then build that out later on. And we've seen on Mercurial that either works really well or gets shut down immediately. So far, Steel Blue is not doing anything to contest it. Oh, that's the new drop. Okay, Dirtbag got a new animation. That is... That is a very cheerful looking dirt bag. I don't know, something about that walk cycle that makes me think the dirt bag is just happy, it's had a great day, just wants to walk around and th then die throwing dirt at somebody, which is not a pleasant thing, but it seems it looks happy about it. Like it's walking like it's really pleased with itself. So like, yeah, I'm gonna make a dirt mound. It's like, good for you, dirt bag. You go, dirtbag. And now our happy dirtbag is forced to retreat because there's nothing of any use going over there. But it is just doing scouty stuff. It's If it were against vehicles, I could see maybe being useful, but as a terrain manipulator. No, Bakuatsu. I'm getting a bit of raiding in. More importantly, is getting a much stronger territory control presence. Steel Blue does have more bandits over to the south. But I don't really see Bakabatsu looking to contest that immediately. The bigger question is the northeast, which Steel Blue is contesting, and Bakabatsu doesn't have a lot to hold it with. In fact, it looks like it's going to be a concentrated assault. Wait, wait, is there? Wait, do they even know? No, they got no idea. They're not even going for that. They're just going straight from the main base. 
Ten bandits towards the main base. Hoping for the best. Yeah, I don't think they have any idea that Bakuatsu has built up over to the northeast corner. And actually, to that end, only the dirtbag is left in the southwest, which probably won't be taken immediately. But still, Bakuatsu does have the stronger economy. They have a felon up as well, which is the perfect choice, really, to deal with all these bandits. And it looks like it's just going straight into Thug, thug Felon Ball. That is the game. Thug Felon Ball against Bandits. Oof, I don't know though. This is the one downside. There are a lot of bandits. Like, Bakuas' commander is in great danger right now. And also, the Northeast has been spotted. Two Lotuses will not be enough to stop all of these bandits coming in here. Which they are absolutely doing. In fact, Steel Blue... How do they have so much more production capacity? Oh, that's how. They just have more production capacity. They have 25 metal per second in the factory instead of 20. So Bakuazu, despite their economic advantage, is not doing so hot, and also is having to deal with the fact that they don't have units in place to defend this. So Northeast is done. It's it's dead. I mean, I, I like the use of this Stardust here. Not a bad idea. But I don't think it's going to be up in time. However, we do have some... We have a fight here, at the very least. I mean, the... Well, that's done. Hard to tell what's going to go on here with the South, though. Felon... Not allowed to get in position. Already kind of got called out with the rogues. And the Stardust not done in... Oh, just barely not done in time. Oof. So close, but not quite. Having said the Felon coming in here... Oof. Would not recommend. That's an anti-bandit force, and the bandits are all over... Actually, they're all over there. They got spread out a bit. Some of them did get killed, so it's not not useless. A little bit unsure how this is supposed to really pan out in favor of Bakuatsu, though. Steel Blue definitely has the advantage. Bakuatsu, if they built another... Oh, even just one convict into the main base and had that build up, or use this convict to build a caretaker in the main base, they'd have a chance. But right now, Steel Blue just has the production advantage. And it's showing. And also, Steel Blue just happens to have a felon of their own, because why not? There's not as much support force. So there is at least that. Steel Blue's felon is not in the strong position, but then again, all of these rogues are here, so it doesn't really matter. There's nothing contesting this. Steel Blue is just gradually pushing back, and there's the caretakers. Bakuatsu finally taking advantage of all the metal they have, getting their production back on track. Otherwise, they're actually pretty even. Well, maybe... Oh, the Felon got drained. The felon got drained way too soon. There's no outlaw as well for additional support, so there is nothing to stop these bandits from coming in here. Except for other bandits. That is actually a thing. And out of that, Bakuatsu gaining a nearly 1,000 metal lead on attrition. Top of having the production back on track, so they might actually be okay here. A little tricky. Unfortunately, the bandits walking to their death. Not sure why. I guess they didn't realize there were all these lotuses here, but there are all these lotuses there. In fact, I would recommend to that Bakuaz to just retreat for a little while, get their shields recharged, get back their... or also get some link shield going on here. Get themselves back into a position where they can actually, you know, get their felon rearmed effectively. Maybe try to stay away from... For the, wrong... the rogues will go down to bandits, and we are seeing a lot of bandits coming in. And outlaw! There's the outlaw. Yeah, a lot of bandits are coming in. So there is a chance there. The rogues could be taken out pretty quickly. Same time, the northeast... Yeah, it is back... It is still blues. Bakuasi will be able to take it back. We're still going to try. Same in the southwest, which is Bakuatsu's commanders taking that. So that's something. Oof. Though not enough bandits coming in in the right spots, unfortunately. Just too many, too much rocket density. The bandits can't really dodge under that. 
Aha! But the felons, or the rogues rather, got too close. The felon able to take them out. And the thug. Unfortunately, does not take the northeast, but does at least break some of the rogues up. Ah, oh, but then there's the iris. Then there's the roaches. That! Those roaches. That's going to be huge. Along with the iris, like, that, as soon as an attack starts, those roaches are going to come in and take out thugs, outlaws, whatever. Or not outlaws, sorry, outlaws would still kill them. But thugs, for sure. Bakuatsu, on the other hand, going for trying to cut off their opponent, taking the southwest. Off trying to split the front. Not a bad idea. Roaches are in position to try to deal with this force, though. Iris just close enough. The roaches get in, and there is the big boom. Most of the shield, most of them down. Bakuatsu's forces almost now entirely concentrated over to the south. That's the one thing I might be saving them right now is the fact that there was that distraction, but it's not going to be enough. Steel Blue, massive cloak force coming in behind the Roaches, looking ready to take the entire game, forcing Bakuatsu to retreat. And that means Steel Blue has all the room in the world to re-expand here. There's a handful of thugs and an outlaw, but that's about it. Whereas there is an indeterminate force, thanks to cloaking, over here. And no easy way of actually detecting it. This is where dirtbacks would be really useful, actually. Well, the Stardust this time is done in time. So there is some relief. Pushing back the bandits. And unfortunately, the bandits over to the south are making short work of any thugs that try to contest. But still, it's at least something. Unfortunately, Bakuatsu doesn't see through that this is all cloaked. So that force is able to get away, and that might still be enough. Bakuatsu able to crack open the south side. Sorry. Did able to crack, that, crack open the south side. Though, Millie, kind of so is Bakuatsu. Suicide mission, but if they get, the, get those caretakers down, it might be worth it. Oh, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. Not even one caretaker is going to go down. That is unfortunate. Thug here for nothing, while at the same time Steel Blue ripping apart Bakuatsu's army. And of course, Steel Blue still has a lot of army over here. Bakuatsu is able to defend, though, for the time being. They lost a metal extractor. They've lost the southwest pretty much completely. So the situation is still dire for Bakuatsu. On their last legs, pushing back, trying to take care of all these expansions. Steel Blue just needs to rip apart Bakuatsu's expansion and got the commander cornered. Stardust is at least something that's providing a little bit of defense, but of course, the rogues can just come in here and take it out. So, bit of a base trade. It's uh, Bakuatsu is the commander cannot hold. Commander has to retreat. There's no way the commander can hold it. Fair to time we have a time. Bakuatsu realizing it, but it might. Is it going to be enough? That is. Looking unlikely, the rogue should be able to get to the Bakuatsu's commander. Same time, Bakuatsu is able to take out Steel Blue's northeast, but again, is it in time? And that is unclear. Bakuatsu's commander goes down thanks to the rogues, and that means the northwest or southwest is totally open. Steel Blue pretty much has the map at this point. Bakuatsu is one last shot at doing something. If they can really disrupt with this force, like take out production structures and resources and such, there is a chance. Steel Blue does have radar coverage. They do see what's going on here. But Bakuatsu practically has to go for a... Like, they have to go for a base race push. That's all they have. Like, push hard. Try to get in. Deal as much damage as possible. Do not hesitate. And there is a chance. It's a slim chance. Especially with the Roach set up here and the two Outlaws. But there is a chance. I mean, Steel Blue has lost a pair of their... Actually, both players lost a lot of their production... Or a lot of their economy. Roach coming in here? Oh, that is painful. That might have ended the thing. That might have ended the entire assault. It's... Yeah, no, this is it. That's that's the Roach that does it. Steel Blue able to defend beautifully. And there is no way this force can actually come in and deal enough damage. Sorry, did I say Roach? I said Snitch. That's the, that's the current name. My bad. Snitches. 
But snitches are... They're the winner. They're the MVP this match. Because everyone forgets about the suit, the walking bombs. Everyone forgets about the walking bombs. I keep talking about imps in cloaky matchups. I actually talk occasionally about snitches in shield matchups, but this time we're seeing plenty of them. It's... It's great. Like, this is... It's good to see that we're actually seeing people use all the factory. Like, it is one of those things where... It, I, it's, it's easy to get locked in a rut of using only a handful of units because it just becomes easier to wrap your head around, like, from a control perspective and a practice perspective. But factories do have about a dozen units each, and... Or, not quite a dozen. Ten military units each. And that is a lot of strategic potential. It's important to use it. But it's a bit too late for Bakuatsu regardless. Even if they do go for snitches, I don't see any way of them breaking out of this. It's just, there aren't a whole lot of things to really cover them. I mean, this one force coming out of the south is at least trying, but again, Steel Blue is just taking the whole map. Bakuatsu has a bit of reclaim to work with, but it's not going to go that far. Unfortunately, they lack in the commander, they lack storage, and they lack in storage, they just, that reclaim was excessed. Kinda wasted, I'm afraid. So I don't know where Bakuatsu is planning on striking in order to actually put any kind of dent in Steel Blue. Right now, I, I hold a lot of doubts so that's going to be viable. Also worth noting, Steel Blue has the Outlaws, they are prepared for roaches. Like, short of a gunship switch to do roach bombing, or snitch bombing, rather, they there's no way of getting snitches in. This this outlaw set is basically saying no. So with that, I don't see... I don't see an easy way for Bakas to get back in this. Unfortunately... Last shot coming in here. Felons draining their shields. Unable to wipe out everything that's set up here. Kind of surprised you're not seeing Racketeers. They would... I mean, they do take make short work of the shields. Status damage is very strong that way. But this looks to be it. Also an air switch, because why not? Steel Blue, I think they're going for a leak. Oh, no, they're going for a Thunderbird. Also a good choice. Also a very good choice. Thunderbirds are... Thunderbirds are strong. They are a thing that are strong. They will kill you. And it looks like that is exactly what's going to happen here. And the owl obviously sees everything. Thunderbird coming in, and that... Wait, what is that going to stun out? Oh, it's going for the factory. Oh, yeah, okay, that's that's it. That's it. Bakuazer throws in the towel. Solid third place showing, and Steel Blue doesn't get third place this week. How about that? They go up to second place, possibly first, if they can beat Gota. Yeah, it's Steel Blue against Gota. That is going to be it. Grand Finals. Taking a short break between now and then, so stay tuned. Because after this break, it'll be Gota and Steel Blue... Trying to take the first place for this week.